Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I am Kyle. I'm here with Mike and Zach. Uh, you guys both have your backgrounds up. I guess I'm, do I need to put my Captain America background back up here? Sure, is, throw it up there. Throw it is, up there. Is there like a is there like a background of Captain America like lying broken on the ground? <laughs> Maybe you should go with that old cap sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, I could actually spoil some stuff from uh, this past uh, Cap uh, Winter Soldier Falcon episode, but I won't do that. Oh, um, I haven't seen any of those yet. It's yeah, so good. I, yeah. I think- and it's like, kind of fitting no for it's kind of fitting clearly but, but like yeah like i like <clears throat> between wandavision and this like uh, i almost wish they did all the marvel stuff like this in like, tv you shows know, rather than movies <laughs> yeah right. you know um i have to i have to get man, on and it. they are still still somehow 11 12 years later they're still making the perfect castings i can't even believe it like it's insane i'm a little bit worried about the casting for like eternals yeah stuff. that i like, that, but, but i'm talking about johnny walker here in, oh sure yeah no 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 like, for, for he's that. nailing right, it. Right, yeah, how, yeah. how about i watch the show and then we yeah, can, yeah. And but then we're we just he's, he's just great in any in any case, I think I said on David's stream that the first thing I would say to Kyle is, "What the hell are you doing with Maul?" So I'll just carry on with that and get us <laughs> get us kick started there, Kyle. This is the second um, podcast that we've opened with that question. Um, <laughs> in fairness, I'm not sure we opened with it. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's true. All right, so uh, Mike did, Mike and I had our civil war. Um, you can catch the vod on. Um, on the Yavin Base Twitch channel at the yep. moment. I'm sure eventually it will be up on YouTube. Um, we're going to talk about it anyway, so we might as well spoil it. Uh, so if you um, want to actually watch it and see what happens without getting spoiled, stop the podcast immediately. And fast forward to, I don't know, 20 minutes from now. <laughs> Maybe forward. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, and uh, I think it should be noted that David's been making YouTube like condensed versions of games too. So yes. if you don't want to watch like a full three like hour game, Wait for the condensed version. Yeah, in like yeah. A week this, so. this one, just full disclosure, this one was a four-hour game. Yeah, um, I figured it was about as that far as like stuff. including deployment and post games. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. We burned those clocks right down to the end there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was needed for sure, though. Like, yeah, every every move mattered. So. so, um, so Mike did take our Civil War and has advanced to uh, top four for Invader League. So, congrats, Mike. Golf Thank flat. you. It was a good game. Um, it was. I, uh, it, we were both saying that was one of the most. I think that might be the most intense game I've had since the 2019 World's Final, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I mean, um, I did not. So we finished around like 1130. Mm-hmm. I did not go to bed until 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I was pretty wound up. I also watched it back. <laughs> um, just because like i i like i i like to debrief yeah, yeah like immediately um and watching it back really helps with that so um yeah but like i e- even after i woke up the next day which was like at noon because i went to bed super mm-hmm. late um Jealous. i was wound up the whole day the next day you know that that yeah no that was um stressful to say the least it's like <sighs> I think so not only were we playing each other but we had hyped this match like a lot yeah. and like like 70 people showed up to watch like the pregame show which was like <laughs> 4 days early which and like that was way more than I thought and I was like well if 70 people are like showing up to like listen to people talk about the match 4 days in advance like how many people are going to be like metaphorically standing around our table and criticizing every move we make, you know, which like changes how you feel when you're playing the game, you know, in addition to the fact that we were playing with chess clocks, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, just like imagine 120 people just like in stands around your Legion table. (laughs) (laughs) That's basically what it was, you know? Um, 
And uh, had we not been like privy to like knowing that that was the case and like a normal invader game is like 20, 30 people. There's like a lot less pressure, I feel like. Um, so yeah, it was stressful. It, yeah. And uh, it was, did not help that it was on VAPS. For the record, I did not, uh, VAPS was not third slot. <laughs> it was, um, it was a second slot, I think. It and, was uh, hostage it was. exchange, evaporators, payload. payload. Yeah. And then the middle, I don't even know what the cards were. I just know major offense was as far left. And then uh, I know that Mike cut limited viz. Mm. Only thing I couldn't figure out was if you cut to supply drop or if that was in the middle too. Supply drop was in the middle. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I passed. Yeah. Because I got made fun of uh, by the chat because this was me watching turn zero because we were discussing your list or, or David, Eric, and, and uh, Lucas were discussing your list. And this was me watching turn zero because I was trying to figure out what the cards were being played. Mm -hmm. So I had this like this, like furry brow trying to figure out what you guys were doing because I wanted one to know what, what was cut and what wasn't. And then I wanted to relay that information. Obviously without audio, I can't really like figure it out until like afterwards. And I'm paying attention to certain cards, not all the cards and all that stuff. So then I, I figured out that Kyle had passed and then I saw Vaps in the middle slot. And I'm like, he's sort of going for Vaps in a sense because his, his pass is saying, I'm okay with the rest. If we play Vaps and, and Mike pushes it to payload, I'm also okay with that. But I would probably prefer Vaps and that's probably what was going through your mind if I had to take a guess. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it was... Uh, I passed and then I vetoed hostage to get to VAPS and then did I if, double if, ban to supply drop? I thought I cut rapid. You might have. You rapid. might have. See, that's the yeah. one thing I wasn't sure. I think I you think, did. I think I cut limited and then I cut rapid. Rapid right yeah. after. Yeah, rapid that's would right, have been good did. for Kyle actually. Yeah, so rapid B2. Yeah. Because I I, just, I remember <clears throat> at one point saying, man, I really didn't want to B2 yep. in the backfield. Yeah, that's no. That's right. That would have been bad for you. Of the, of the very few statements we made during the game, that was definitely one of them. Yeah, there <laughs> was. That, that makes sense, though. There was very little talking during this game, which is unusual <laughs> for a game between me and Mike. Yeah, um, I was concerned. Not about to that. say that like, it wasn't like it was still you know polite and cordial, but we were just yeah, so like so it's like zoned game. and focused. And yeah. I'm glad we didn't do face cam because face cam would have just been like, yeah, you know, yeah. like the zone look <laughs> the whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, we ended up playing Vaps. Um, Zach thinks I should have vetoed the payload. Maybe I should have. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's tough to say, but like once you get past that point, it's kind of irrelevant, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. it was just it was just ironic because we were discussing it pregame. Yeah, and and I just genuinely thought that your close range list against Mike's list that had a lot of range with with air support take that clankers and arc troopers where you only have one BX and you're not playing orbital strike, right? Like those are all things that you don't have anything to kind of overpower him at range. And sometimes VAPS can turn into that situation where, which is what happened kind of where you're playing defensive as blue and you're and while playing defensive, you're not really pushing forward. Or in this case, you really had no angle to push forward. If you really think about it, mm -hmm. you had, you had angle a and you had angle B Angle B was the hill. Angle A was like the spire in the middle. And if you were to actually try and engage at range three, you would have been like in the wide open getting smoked. Yeah. And like, so like you had no actual good approach to range three. That was without even, I obviously wouldn't have known that until the game started. Yeah. Well, prior to the game, I was like, Kyle's going to want VAPS. And I understand why he might want VAPS, but I think payload's better. It was just the conversation before the game, before cards even were flipped. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I was very happy we didn't go to payload because I think I can count the number of payload games I've played on, like, three fingers. Um, you know, just as far as, like, a, I'm not super comfortable with that. <laughs> with that yeah, personally. And especially where Kyle can also somewhat dictate where Maul can go with payload. Um, yeah, but it's so my problem with payload. Let me give you my Yeah, no, of course. Here um was the map <laughs> yeah no so as, I get it. as you I get noted it. It, it was fairly open lots of wide gaps um on vaps like i'm not obligated to force a confrontation uh on payload both sides are obligated to force a confrontation and on that map that confrontation was probably going to start at range four ish oh it definitely was going to start at range um, four yeah <laughs> like, like it wasn't probably <laughs> yeah which is not good for me so at least on VAPS, I have a chance to basically like, you know, leave aim tokens, leave clone aim tokens on the table, which is 
what I actually managed to do for four turns. Three um, turns. Three yeah. turns, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's there's no chance. Payload sets up a slug fast in the middle of the table, which, you know, maybe that would have been fine with B2s and stuff, but... Um, it would it would have turned into like what could you trade Maul for? Exactly. Yeah. Likely. yeah. And, for sure. and the, the that's not a situation. So I think before we like get into like super specifics, I think that having some perspective on our like mindsets going into this game is important because you know th there are plays that you make in a normal game that are like risky, but when you're in top eight of invader league like and you're in a really high level game like taking a 20 percent play like you're going to get punished for it like 100 percent. like like there were a lot of the, like i think questions about moves that i made moves that kyle made that were like very conservative and the answer to why those moves got made was like could they have panned out if we did them differently yeah, sure. The thing is, if they don't pan out, you instantly lose. And in a high level game, like that's just not a risk that like you don't you don't take that risk until you have to. Yeah. So the the broad broad strokes of the setup here is basically there was like this hill that was kind of between our two zones. And it's a hill with ramps on both sides. So it's crustable from both directions. No jump required. Um and basically, Mike ended up putting one of his vamps on top of that hill, and I had another one like on the bottom of my side of the hill. And I basically just first first drop infiltrated Maul right there next to that vamp, which initially was great. That's like clearly that's a good position for Maul. Um, but it took about three turns, but Maul man or uh, Mike managed to basically flank him. Yeah. Um, and I have essentially had to run away with Maul, or here you get plastered by like five or six clone units. So that's what I did. <laughs> should be noted that it essentially did not... I think a part of the thing Mike was discussing is that we might have been questioning some of his moves, me especially, was him moving to the right, was because looking at the position Maul was in, it almost looked like he was never going to get shot. Mm -hmm. And then it was the moment that Mike started taking a shot on Maul that you realized that Maul was in more danger than expected. I, I still... I get why you retreated with Maul and I understood and I actually really liked the move. So what happened was Mike swung out at in the middle of like round three, I think it was mm -hmm. make a shot on Maul at range three that honestly didn't look like it existed. It ended up being shot under like this box and it turned into, you guys ended up calling for a judge to make sure it was heavy cover because it was going under this box and like how the 2d so like so terrain that, stuff happens. Is, that was sort of a funny story. We were both like looking at the shot and we were like, we really didn't discuss this ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I, I think the chat brought it up how we talk about how discussing terrain prior is like important, but it, to, to your credit, it was a weird shot. Number one. I don't think any of us really noticed it until it finally happened. It was one you of know? those things that like, I don't think you can plan for. Coming super up. Like, it was like super corner case. Yeah. No. So and, yeah, um, there wasn't even much argument about it. We were just like, oh yeah, we didn't discuss this. Let's just call it judge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think you both knew the call would be heavy. It's just you wanted to be right about yeah. it. Right? Yeah. And um, so Maul takes that shot, and I think he takes like a wound or two. I think he took two wounds. There. He took he two took wounds. Two yeah. Wounds. So and you would play to add the card that gives him a wound. Was it at last, right? Or you may take a wound at that point. I yeah, I definitely would, would not have taken the. Option. But you would not have taken. <laughs> but, but what I was getting at was you were setting up to take the wound anyways. I think to give yourself yeah, yeah. a third action. You ended up getting the two wounds from Mike. And I think, you know, going back to get backed by your BX droids who picked up the back to from the, um, from the supply drop. I like that play essentially where I question, and I would never normally question you because again, I've said this a million times, you're a way better player than I am. And I'll never be on your level. Right. I question when you went behind the spire the next turn, that's the only thing that I thought was where it went south. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because I just thought it was inevitable, especially when Mike finally dislodged Maul from your position, that you were going to lose a B1 and you had no, I don't want to say you had no answer because you did. You shot that yellow squad on the hill several, several times. And, but the yeah, issue they was panicked like, the next turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so yes, you, you actually panicking kind of hurt you, believe it or not. Because it took them out of range from other I, uh, pan there. panicking kept him in the game, frankly. It did. Yeah. Like probably the fact too that they were panicked was the reason that 
the droids had an opportunity to that's fair close the game out right? that's fair yeah. i was thinking more from the standpoint of him trying to need to have to kill something yeah um I mean, but my concern was that your one piece that could actually kill clones was so far away from that far away from from the time you needed to to actually answer when he finally killed the b1s that yeah. was my real so like, issue not issue but like yeah like my yeah. my real concern of what happened there so there were there were two things there um the first is i just i straight up misplayed my command hand on that turn um i had to ambush and duel the fates and i don't like to waste to duel the fates just for the dodge token if i can help it because the other effects on it particularly the disengage are really good um but as soon as i played ambush and flipped it face up i'm like this is a situation where i should have just played duel the fates for the dodge token because you know i knew he was going to play take that clankers he did he's got two squads up on that hill um, you know, one of which was already in range four of Maul, and Maul was basically in the open. Um, so he would have got shot, uh, you know, with no dodge token in the open. It, by... It's also worth noting that there were three arc strike teams right there that could yeah, yeah. feed them six aim tokens, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. Know. So that would have been like a 10 hit shot against Maul in the open with no dodge token, potentially. Um, uh, on average, he does there. Yes. <laughs> for those, just, just to be clear. For those doing the math at home. So in my head, I was like, all right, well, I already messed up this command play. You know, he doesn't have a dodge token. So I can either lose Maul or I can lose a B1. Um, and I chose the latter, basically. And um, it was actually, so later on that turn, um, Mike managed to kill a second B1 <laughs> with a ridiculous... <laughs> uh, it was one of those situations. On <laughs> there, was, there was one model left. And he, he took a, it was fives. So, um, you know, fives is the heavy weapon, right? So he managed to do like this cohesion swing where he could only see this 1v1 model with one clone trooper. And it wasn't even the heavy weapon. It was just a dude with one black die. Um, but of course he had like six or seven aim tokens. That is the six. Yeah. Six. So uh, he was able to basically take this like range four shot on the edge of a B1 um, with one guy <laughs> and just it, it re-roll the dice six Mike times. It essentially won Mike the game. It did because I that squad that you used initially to you do take that clankers was killable. With yeah, the last, yeah, with totally the last killable, turn yeah. saber throw. Um, yeah. I ended up having to make an objective play because you killed that second B1. Um, but uh, yeah, even on that last turn, it was really like, you know, like one token pull. At the, like if you had pulled an arc or something on that so last turn I, instead of that score unit. I think I could have body blocked with the arcs too. Possibly, um, yeah. But but yeah, the roll Basically, off was big though too. The roll off was. was big, but it's worth noting that the um, the probe droids were in the bag. They were in the bag, yeah. And and they were there was more than just special forces in the bag. I don't know exactly what the concept it was. It was fifty was, fifty. But, I think I had two core tokens and two special forces. Um, which like clearly like, you know. Uh, well, now I need to go back and see what you pulled first. I don't even remember. Me either. I got. I never even thought of it because so you lost I, the roll off, and I just really blanked yeah. out from even really paying attention to that part. I, I also messed up that last turn um, in my pre-positioning because I, I could have actually moved my B one such that I could have like direct relayed an order to the probes. Um, and then I, was I also really concerned about that to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I should have done that. And then I also this is all hindsight, of course. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, this clearly, whole conversation clearly, is... like you know, every game is a perfect game in your head in hindsight. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this isn't the edge of tomorrow. None of us are Tom Cruise, so. Um, I've never seen that movie, so I don't oh, understand that reference. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent, dude. Movie, it's... Right? I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan. I'm not either, but it's an excellent movie. I'm telling. Well, you. that's why you like it because you get to watch Tom Cruise get murdered, like 50 times. And Emily okay. Blunt is awesome. It's <laughs> and it's got Emily Blunt in it. So okay. Maybe I'll basically, it it's basically Groundhog Day with aliens, where Tom Cruise dies repeatedly. Mm. It's so good. So, oh. if that sounds like something you'd like, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, and then also, I think there was several ways that I could have actually killed two units on that last turn. Um, like, yeah, because I had three B twos. You know, I could have force pushed those phase twos into the range of those three B twos, and then saber throw like an arced strike team with Maul or something, um, which he was in a range to do. But anyway, I decided I to mean, go for the objective play, which I think probably had a higher chance of success. Anyway, it did. But, I think it did. Mike was because so it didn't require any tokens. rolling dice. And, yeah. Well, he's dug in with surge tokens and dodge tokens from vigilance. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, 
that was uh, vigilance was brutal that game. Oh my god! <laughs> I, you know, people have all, been like chastising me for taking vigilance over strict orders. Oh my gosh! And like, like it wasn't close this game. No, like it, not it, even. Like strict, like strict orders might have like helped me out with the panicking unit up on the hill, but like if I really needed to, I could have fire supported. Yeah, I don't right, think that right. was even really that big of a deal. The only reason why it was a big deal is because you needed them to body block the droids from getting to the VAP. That was yeah. really why that suppression really mattered at that point. Other than that, it's not a big deal. Um, I think they had five suppression anyway, so strict orders wouldn't have worked. Ironically, if you went back like yeah. six episodes ago, where yeah, Mike yeah. and I was like, vigilance is enough, not situational awareness, Kyle. Um, well, the boss. On, uh, on that turn, they had three suppression tokens. Oh, yeah. on the last turn, yeah. Totally. Yes. yeah. The they turn three. before they did have... Five, I think. Five. Yeah, so yeah. in both cases, strict orders does nothing. Right. It was just kind of, eh, yeah. you know. All um, this is, in, is insurance on the panic turn, I guess. No, it wouldn't matter because you had five. Yeah, no man. Yeah, five yeah. down four is okay. still panic. Yep. I mean, they would have never run off the board, just to be clear. No, I wasn't no. counting on that either. I just, like, you know. I can just give them an order and flip the face we were, down. We yeah, were yeah. Discussing, we were discussing that. That hill is such a, first of all, that hill's in such oh, a weird horrible. spot. Well, yeah, it's horrible. I, I mean, anyone that plays I mean, TTS and you play these hills, you know that these hills are like the worst. In fairness, the main reason it was horrible was because I decided to put my aggressive evaporator at the top of it. <laughs> yeah, sure, well. sure. But th- those pieces suck anyways. But my, my point I was getting at was we weren't sure if you could run off the board off that hill or if you would have had to have run towards he definitely, down. Like, like if he panicked that last, like if he had force suppression and if he panicked um he you just go to the board would. edge no matter what right because it's on the edge of the board i think i think even going down the hill it would have he would have run off the board we thought there was enough space for you to, to yeah. go off the board still that way but it was still such a weird situation where like let's say you don't go off on that long way down the hill right and you have the straight shot that would bring you to the edge of the hill does that actually count like it's just so, so, such a weird wonky piece of terrain that yeah kind of, yeah i hate everything about those you, hills. you know what i mean I think my spent like ten minutes trying to balance dudes on that one. So. Oh my yeah, god! Honestly, yeah, yeah. I burned like twenty <laughs> minutes of clock time, like tr- particularly on the far side hill, trying yeah. to like yeah. get dudes to stand up and like they one lean left and one lean right, and if they and it was super left, important, they mind you, see, and if they leaned right, they could, yeah. and it just like oh my god, um, like you needed them to be in place to take the shots you were trying to get too. So like yeah. that was like important cohesion. It's just like if the surface was an even plane, it would have been like you could have at least like managed it. But because like if you put them in a different place on the hill, they lean like 45 degrees the other way, you know, it's just and sometimes they fall off. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, yeah. They look cool. Uh, but they do. They're just you know. and it's it's also like you'd never see a terrain piece like that on a real table. Not that's like probably not that steep. No, that's the no. other thing. Sometimes they even, slide down the sides. Even hills with like ramps, like like angled yeah. ramps, you don't really see like they're most, usually like a, like a little like oval. It's like, like a or like a stair step situation. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I digress. We're done complaining about the hills. <laughs> it was it was it was a super close match right up until the end. Um, but uh, yeah, congrats to Mike. Thanks. I will. I will go see if I can find Maul some new legs. Um, <laughs> I I will say not to toot my own horn, but if you want to see how to deal with a force user when you don't have one, it's a good game to watch. Yep. Yeah, there were. I mean, basically, there was there was one shot that I had where you had like a unit in a range of Maul, um, and I lost the party roll on that turn, and you immediately moved him away. So. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing um, is that even if you dive there, I just withdraw and open up on him. Well, I would have, I would have done move, move, standby, but sure, sure. Um, yeah, that's. Fair. I think, but at I that point, Maul... like everybody just runs away, right? Like, so I was talking uh, to Zach about this. He was except like, he's next to your evaporator. He is so next to the really evaporator. Work. That's yeah. very true. Um, but if I kill him, I can probably undo the damage he does. Yeah, the- theoretically, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. I think Maul was I think Maul was knee deep in the in the objective game the whole time. I don't think he was ever. I don't. First of all, Mike would never really allow you to get to him. Essentially, 
There, and, there's like no situation where Maul like cuts up a bunch of clones. Yeah, like, like, not that game. Though. No, not no. that game. So like, I think just Maul was always objective focused in this situation. Yeah, it well, just. It, and this is the problem I think with lightsaber users of like uh, in a like high level legion plays that like if your opponent knows how to deal with it, you know, and le- it's it's very difficult to actually get in there. Like Maul is like particularly good at getting in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you had any other Force user there, like, the move-move standby play isn't even an option. Right, and the, your right. your engagement range is shorter. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so it's totally. just like, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. That's how I feel about it. No, I'm with you. It's, you know, you don't really need, like, a actual Force user counter to counter a Force user anymore. You just... You know, yeah, you kite, you kite them, in certain situations. In certain situations, I mean, the there's definitely part, like, yeah. like, uh, you know, it's tough to play an objective like Vaps, like that. I think. Yeah, um, it is. Um, Vaps with the Force user is very stressful because you probably have to play it like Kyle did nine out of ten times, like if well, not ten out of ten. And I do think yeah. that like, as if blue, the, if the I flank mean. with the B twos doesn't collapse, like that game is very different. Yeah, uh, that was my other mistake. Is I, I think I put one B two over there at the start. I should have oh, yeah. just put all three of them all over three. there. All mm-hmm. three, because Maul was perfectly capable of holding that hill by himself. Yeah, because uh, because I was looking at it and I was like, you know, one one or two B twos, like I can deal with that. Like I can, like w- I mean, if you watch the game, you'll see that basically the start of every turn, I already had two dodge tokens up, so I was yep. in heavy cover against his blast weapons, which means that like on average or even above average like you're not rolling enough dice to like spike a clone unit um I mean, like, even, like through the dodge tokens yeah even the range two shot is on average six inch which is a lot clearly but yeah i mean it's really to, good right yeah but six six down to four and then you know with Three surges with and dodge. stuff uh so, no yeah. six down to two dodges is four because he's in heavy cover i was saying like, but he's got blast. Oh, yeah, blast oh blast oh yeah geez. yeah yeah, yeah. But that's the, what's great about dodge tokens, right? Well, you know? I mean, this is where, like, like normally, um, if you can't take a shot at the end of a turn, you can wait till the token's clear, right? And, and take then it take at the it beginning. at the start, right? Right. But vigilance doesn't let you do that. Yep. Um, yeah. And that's why if I had three B twos, it would have been different because first shot would have been eaten by the dodges, but then the next two shots would have been. But yeah, anyway, you, you still know, have to if, spike at that point, if, right? If, like, yeah, if I could take a Tom Cruise Edge of Tomorrow take back and like redeploy everything, I think I would kind of put Maul almost by himself on that other side, and then put like my B twos and probably even my B ones all on that um, behind that spire thing to prevent you from flanking Maul. But yeah. like Zach uh, from Top Down, I did not appreciate that that flanking shot was even possible because of how those boxes were like arrayed. No. Until it happened, I really didn't think yeah. it was happening, honestly. Oh, I, did, did you listen to the VOD yet, Kyle? And no. Like, listen to him trash talk me for the first two and a half times. I wasn't trash talking you. <laughs> Not trash talking you at all. I didn't trash talk you. I don't understand why Mike is moving laterally. I, this is silly. This I don't get it. This, these I didn't are say it was really silly. bad moves. I, just, I had never seen you make those moves with clones before. It made sense once the shots went into yeah. Maul. Until the shots went into Maul, I, I was like, I don't know. Like I, I just felt like you could have gone more into the middle rather than the swing to the right. Essentially, it, yeah. it looked it looked like a position that was not flankable, but it was. Yeah, and was the only reason why, yeah, yeah, the oh, only yeah. reason why I didn't like the swing as much as a like as it, it was that the B twos were there. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I mean, you know I, what I mean? Like I had to you were cohering back in order to make it work. Right? You were cohering into a spot where they could have hit you without even getting into. Well, they would have been at range, but they could have gotten into range two without getting into range two of your leader. And not that, that that really matters for you, that, but like that did happen. I did take a couple of range two shots with those. B2s. You, you missed. You missed one though. I think you were measuring from Mike's leader rather than your own, and mm-hmm. I think I, you taking another one. No, uh, he definitely did because I saw it during the game and I didn't really? say anything. Yeah, and that's a TTS, <laughs> and that's a TTS thing, right? That's something that probably would never even happen in real life. Yeah, yeah. But because uh, um, you, you turned the the range band on my leader, you were measuring from my leader because you did the thing where you turned the range band on. But I yeah. had winged a dude out. Okay. You so know, I missed. I missed a range two shot. At you some missed point. a range. I don't okay. know. I don't know like, if it would have mattered. The thing, the thing was, I still had three dodge tokens. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Right. right, like it, it wasn't, 
And the thing was, I wasn't like throwing my dudes like in cover because there was no point. Right. You know, I was just like, well, screw it. <laughs> like, I'm not going to have cover whether I, I want it or not. So there's no point in trying to cohere these guys behind it. Um, yep. So. Yeah, no. It was, it was very, very positive. For those that want to see how to play a game as VAPS or how to play a game on VAPS, where it's like all about positioning, watch watch our game. It might seem boring for like the first three turns, but um, it, it gets spicy on turn three. It does, and frankly, like if you're really paying attention to the nuance of all the positioning, it's not boring for the first three turns either. No, it wasn't. Like it, you know, I um, it's a, it's you you can appreciate what's happening in the game. Yeah, well, and that's why when we say it was one of the most intense games we've ever played, it was not just because of the hype. It was because it was like every move was like critically important <laughs> yeah like there there were a lot of things like um somebody mentioned like i put like orders on a phase one squad on turn two i think um in <clears throat> when we played standing orders and they're like yeah. why would you ever do that and like it was because i was last first in with them to like yep. get them in and out so maul couldn't grab me right like yep. because if i if i lose the roll off there i just wait a turn um right to, to do that thing right like I, I was just gonna play standing orders like two or three times until <laughs> yeah i know until i found it I and i was gonna like... i was gonna match your standing orders until it happened yeah, yeah no did, totally but, yeah um yep playing yeah. standing orders mid game is so important and in games like that because then you save your mm. better command cards for later i i mean i can't well, it's more just about losing priority and well and losing priority but, too yeah. but like, yeah, you need to go saving... last yeah, it, it was yep. also. I do think, um, particularly on those early turns, like the the fact that you didn't have units that could like rip standbys off, I think was problematic. Well, that's one weakness of that list. Like, sure, clearly it has a lot of range three shooting, um, but uh, because of how that hill worked, I was not really able. Like, you could kind of sit on the back. You know, your vap was here, right? And you could kind of sit on like the back half of it. Yeah. and see up towards the VAP and standby and not be able to have the standby stripped unless I could get some kind of elevation, yeah. um, which I couldn't. So, and um, I was ironically though, past range five of your sniper. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, ironically, even if he had a second BX, I really don't know if it even makes a difference in this situation. I don't think there's an angle I can get like, on those standbys. I mean, like the, the way the map, first of all, the way the map like is is kind of weird, but the way that you made the map, how it was with that VAP placement made it especially weird. Because like the sight lines were really goofy, like I didn't realize it until I started like looking at the deployment, and I was like, the sight lines on the hill are weird. Then you go down and look at next to the hill, the sight lines between the silo were weird. My yeah. position then, was all sorts of awkward. It was super is, is, awkward. Yeah. Is and how I felt about. I it. and I'm honestly not joking when I probably said that I was mainly watching from your perspective rather than Kyle's mm -hmm. because Kyle's was a little more straightforward than yours, right? Yeah. Like yours was in such a weird. I couldn't really figure. I it just out. like the, I had to the you know it didn't end up mattering a ton, but like. <laughs> my entire zone was like full of difficult terrain and impassable shit. Oh my God. Those yeah. and, I was like, and I was just like, <laughs> and those green is... pools of goop. Like, yeah. You know, wow. I was like, this is kind of a nightmare. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. And like, even if like you get in there, like there's no good sight lines really. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I think, you know, on turn zero, like, before we started moving pieces and stuff, like you were in a very good position because I didn't have any good shots. Uh, no, I agree. That's what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally. You know, um, it, it was very much a like, you know, um, I think uh, so, Zach, you might, you said I was on skates the first couple turns, and yeah, you know, you kind of have to if if your deployment doesn't work out, you kind of have to shift. Yeah, and that, well, I kept on saying that, like, I just thought that the hilt, I thought the hilt. Well, first of all. I still think that again, and I think you and I discussed this. Is I don't think you were expecting Maul to drop so early. <laughs> I wasn't, um, and and that's yeah. that was more of a. I've played Kyle a lot, and I know yeah. that he likes to infiltrate last as opposed to first. Well, I had said but, that I was like, this might be knowing your opponent, not expecting what he was doing a little know, bit. I, I definitely, when I dropped my aggressive VAP during setup, I had expected to like 
scout like an arc team like behind that hill right you know down to zone the bottom and be able bit. to zone him out a bit yeah. but because like clearly he's gonna end up at the base of that stupid crate like whether 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 you infiltrate him or you have to double move him to get there or whatever right that was the uh, position he was going to be in at some point yeah i just thought that i might have like turn one and two to do the objective as opposed to having to like fiddle with my command cards to make mm-hmm. it work right yeah yeah i mean um yeah it was it was interesting um it, it was you both had to go right to go left at some at different <laughs> points in the game essentially yep um and you know again i, I don't think anyone really realized that mall was shootable until it happened and then you're like oh well crap and then uh the game kind of flipped on its head a little bit, you know? Um, well, and even, I think I saw some folks suggest that maybe he should have just moved to the other side of that hill, which, you know, you would he would have eaten the shots from those two units that were over there, which maybe is fine, whatever. But also, like, if you get down on the table, one side of that hill is super steep. Mike's side was really steep. But the other side is, like, really shallow. And you can actually, like, it's hard to describe via audio, but you can actually essentially see to the other side of that hill, which would have been my side of the hill from the center of the table because of how shallow the slope is on the other side. Yeah. So with silhouettes, it's reasonably likely that even if I had put Maul over there, he would have not only been shot by those two units, but by like, you know, the bulk I'm, of Mike's army, which was in the center of the table. I'm pretty sure because I was the take that clanker's turn. Um, I'm yep. pretty sure I could have negotiated like a move cohere. Yep. You just shoot Maul, right? And uh, not to like beat a dead horse, but if but if you lose Maul, you lose the game. Like the game's just there's, over. Yeah. There's no making up for 180 points in the bag without yeah. without repercussions. Yep. So it was a good play by your part to put me into this, in a position where it was like I could either lose Maul or I could lose this B1 unit. <laughs> Those are my yeah, options. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, if he runs away with Maul, like that that's really the only play he can make here, right? Yeah. Um, so. If Maul runs away, it opens up the rest of the table because mm. all of a sudden I have an extra two range bands to work with. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. Yep. So. Yep. And the Sith probes still almost have to vapt on the last turn. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did. I, I did not appreciate how close they were. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. No. I, I saw you like doing things like, you know, taking dodges and aims and stuff near the tail end of turn five and i was just like well i um he's not moving more units close to this path so had i had more time to think about it yeah i think i would have been able to puzzle that through earlier than i did i just like we had like nine minutes left on the clock we did and i I was just like i need to get like these activations that i thought didn't matter like i just needed to get through them like i was concentrated Mm -hmm. on just making sure that you couldn't like step up with a b2 and blow a unit off the table um yep so yeah i was definitely feeling that too where it's like you know this activation can't do the thing that i originally intended on it doing so i'm just gonna basically pass <laughs> right yeah <laughs> instead of know. looking for like a suitable option b totally yeah um, uh not not to like so uh, while we we're sitting here i got a little quiet and probably looked like i was doing something just because i was i was looking at the the vod real quick you pulled your bx snipers first out of the bag in did i turn six yeah <laughs> That was because you you passed with them immediately on the spire, basically. Well, because well, I went I went first. Well, right. Well, no, no. We were saying that if you won the roll off and gone to the bag, what would he have pulled? Sure. And I mean, it was a special forces. You know, but you. No, you, no, I know. I, I, I just, you got to win both roll offs. There. Is sure. There. Sure. You know, sure. it's not a 50 50. It's really a 75 25. No, of course. But, uh, you know, yeah, you got to win priority and then you have to pull the special forces. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, it was my own uh, curiosity there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact that there were, he had a 25% chance to, to win the game at the end there. And the thing is, though, that it's like, it's not exactly a 25% chance to win the game because there's a chance that I also roll that suppression off. Right. right. If you rally yeah. and, get, and get the suppression off, yeah. you can go tap the VAP again. Well, I would have been able to body block the VAP. That's possible. That's rows. possible too. Yeah. Can you? Do you think you could have gotten that done with three? Yeah, because it was where it was on the hill. It was only. It was in a like weird spot. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Um, um, that was my plan anyway. I don't know if I would have been able to pull it off or not, but 
Yeah, I mean, it's possible yeah. that like I step up and like I could have definitely stepped up, cohered somebody to range one to try and clear them off, and then right, you could have timed things a little bit differently. Yeah, right. although then Maul had an order. Then Maul, just Maul killed. yeah, right, yeah. Um, I did, but I don't think he could have force pushed them at that point. He definitely would have had a saber throw them. Saber throw and, and yeah. clear the whole unit. Uh, no, that was. Because I moved them closer. That was the only reason you could force yeah, push them you, at all. Yeah, he was, he, yeah he engaged but he only him. took one move. Maul had a second. I took an aim instead of taking a second move with Maul in that last turn. I thought you precision scoped. Mm -mm. And you moved twice. I don't think so. I don't know. Anyway. I, th I think irrelevant. he almost had to in the <laughs> position he was in. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. It is irrelevant, though, yeah. It yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's always good to go through those things. It is. It is. It is. It's just, you know. It was, anyway. it was definitely a messy end, end of the game for... Uh, yeah, those stupid hover droids. I know they're amazing. I yeah. love them. I, I, is it incognito they have? I yeah, yeah I was incognito. Like, I was like flipping through the RRG like early in the game, uh, <laughs> just to it's, figure out like exactly what I. I mean, I don't know. I just don't. It's play super it weird well. how it interacts. Like you engage them in melee, but they kept incognito and and I've and I got confused for a minute because you got into range one of them, but you didn't actually make an attack, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, so they still had incognito. Stayed. Yeah, so incognito stayed, and it just created like this whole weird situation, and like it all processed in our brains at the same time. We're like, oh wait, Maul can force push them off, and we don't know if Mike can get there. But right, that was the thing. When even when I had engaged him, he was not of it until I like double body blocked. He double body blocked with the phase ones there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which you and, had to do with cohesion, I think. <laughs> well, and I messed up the cohesion on the first body block. I should have cohered the fifth dude. Someplace Maul would definitely be able to see him. Yeah, that was, that was stupid. Right, 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 right. I just again, clocks wasn't thinking. Yep. You know. But you did pull off the double body block and pulled off the win. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> your next game is against. Uh, so the t the top four, I guess we should talk about it is, um, three clones and one droid, right? Yep. It Snyder. Is. Snyder, the lone droid, snuck in there with a um, pulled the off a win um, with the dreaded thirteen. Yeah. Uh, so I want to I want to caveat that because I actually think his list is a lot better. Yeah, it's got the vibro swords, which I think is actually a really good mix. The, I mean, they're definitely good last game. Um, yeah. One shotting <laughs> the hostage unit. Yeah. They also, is that what they did? Yeah, they won. Yes. They they one shot a full full to dead clone, phase two unit. unit. What? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I no. I mean, I think that there was a mistake that got made there as far as like that a hostage unit. He had priority. He he could have pulled them out of that and chose not to. But that's another thing altogether. Um, but they have a comms jammer. Yeah. Oh. Which is which is good against clones. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, it's real good against clones. So. Um, I mean, like, call me captain can definitely take care of them. Yeah, um, but you know, it's 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 some spice in that list, that, and I well, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the extra added layer of threat saturation because those BX droids at range five are like whatever, right? They're just another sniper. Whereas this is like another unit that kind of get in your face if you needed to, right? Yeah, like it gives um, you, it gives you a better option essentially. And Navarro, unlike Kessel, has a lot of line of sight blockers yeah. and some very large ones near the center of the table. So it does. Yeah. Um, he very, very well could get them close to you without you getting shots on them. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I um, it'll be an interesting game for sure. Yep. And the Maybe other game is that Saturday. Whatever four seventeen is. So uh, yeah, I think it's Saturday. I think, I think Saturday then. Yeah, yeah, Saturday. Um, and the other game is uh, Timbo versus Ino Satam. Yep. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and um. That's that's the uh, Timbo's running the Saber Padme list, and Inosatum is running that. Um, that basically, it's, it's Arc team, right? Yeah, but he's got Maddox and stuff. It's the it's the Rex list that we talked about um, mm -hmm. last week. Who's blue in that game? Anyone know? I don't know. I think Timbo is, but I'd have to double check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, it, I mean, other than there's three Gar armies, like it's actually kind of a diverse uh, 
top four, I feel like. Yeah, all four lists are different. You know, I mean, like, there are two copies of Rex, but, like, the lists are pretty different. They are. Wildly different, yeah. It's it's not like last season where you had, you know, it was the same makeup, actually. It was three clones, one droid. But the three clone wisps were all almost identical. You know, you had the you had the full arcs. Um, I think there was it was me, Kingsley, Cook, and yeah. So it was actually two years in Kingsley's think, list were were almost the same. Was it Ellis maybe with with Dooku steps? Maybe? It was um uh, I think it was Garn. Oh Garn, okay. it was Ellis yeah. or Garn, yeah. Um, Which I think was also Dooku steps. No, Garn was running Grievous steps. Grievous steps. Mm, um, I'm I'm remembering that game now. Yeah, they played Hemden. Oh yep. yeah, I remember now too. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But yeah, so basically you had two arc stars, one rex star, and then a, a grievous steps. Um, so yeah, this season is in some ways slightly more diverse, <laughs> but still three clone players. Yeah, yeah, um, and I mean, I think uh, I mean I think we probably said this a few times, but like, doesn't really matter what tokens you're sharing. It's, it's still, still really good. good. <laughs> yeah, sharing yeah, tokens I, is good. You know, <laughs> um, and. You know, I think I think it's just naturally shifting to sharing bulk aim tokens instead of standby tokens, like and the occasional dodge token for you know. yeah. I mean, like in our match, like clearly it, you know, um, it didn't cost Mike to take the dodge action at all. Well, right? the right thing now. is, like, if, if we're if we're playing like a different objective, like I probably don't get to take those dodge tokens. Yes, yeah. no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, you yeah. had the opportunity to do so here. Yeah, and they basically stood for the rest of the game, yeah. essentially. But yeah, I mean, sharing name tokens is pretty good. It is. Just like that B1 Unileader knows. Yep. Because it's never one shot. It's really like six shots condensed into one shot. Yeah. That shot was so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen too. As soon as you coheared them, I'm like, this guy's going to get one dice crit on a, you know, lying in wait from this clone unit. <laughs> I mean, you've got pretty good odds with six aim tokens. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like it's, it's really not even that far fetched. He just turned into like a range for arc unit, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, uh, I, uh, I think David doesn't have the, you know, like the not safe work. Filter okay. set. I, I was like, I apologize for this, David, but Mike, you're dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, no, no, I, I. It was a great shot. Like it was just, it was just funny how it all. Like it was just how it all happened was just funny to it, me. In, was, in fairness, I thought I was gonna be able to at least get two guys to see, but <laughs> <laughs> that silo was weird. Was, <laughs> like I, yeah, it was it was a weird angle, and I was <laughs> like, well, this is my last activation. I might as well spend the aim tokens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. And if I kill this guy, I probably win the game. So yeah, I was like, if I clear a second unit here, like the difference between killing one unit and two units in that game is is huge because all of a sudden Massive. you got to kill two of my units, which is a way bigger hill to climb than yep. killing one. Yeah, right. Um, so, are we? Do we want to move on to something else? Or do we want to keep on? <laughs> yeah, we should talk about an actual strategy topic today. Um, <laughs> this this post game show brought to you, by, <laughs> right? Um, hey, it's all interesting stuff. It's always good to hear what's going yeah. through people's minds and in thinking about what could have gone differently. And yeah, uh, you know, it's important to go through those things honestly by yourself. And it's probably even better to do with other people because then you see some other things. You know, it's it's interesting. Yep, totally yeah um yeah and you you know not like i haven't been replaying that game uh, in yeah, my brain yeah, for the last imagine. two days yeah I can only imagine. <laughs> it's like the worst feeling in the world um not to anyway like get down yet. also have <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks go team iron man yep. <laughs> um <laughs> anyway good luck the rest of the way i'm rooting for you thank you um, i uh rough it's gonna be an interesting hill to climb i haven't actually played 13 staffs in this tournament yet um, yeah, you played aats a long way instead i have played, played, <laughs> played, played so many AATs. Um, <laughs> it, like i'm uh you know it'll, it'll be a nice change of pace yeah. um but yeah i mean it's the next two matches are not going to be easy either you know uh, like uh heaven forbid like i end up playing timbo i like i don't i don't 
I don't know what to think of that list yet. I don't know either. Um, yeah. I don't know what you would even do. Uh, on paper, it looks like an AAT list. Yeah. You know, but it's backed up by R2, which is a little, a little. I mean, I, I've, I've fought through an AAT with like four astronauts that's true. back up yeah. this season. Like, yeah, it, that's, that's I'm true. not, I'm not super worried about that aspect of it. I just like. The astromechs don't have a secret mission though. Yeah. Yeah, but the, th- the thing is, I think R2 the, the astromech there. either gets to try and score a yeah, yeah. mission or it gets to try and repair the tank. It can't really do both. Yeah. I also don't think he has blast off in the list. That's possible. I, yeah. I, I haven't I haven't looked super hard because it's like it's too down the road if yeah. if I, I gotta win the next one. I'm concentrated yep. on getting past Snyder and his vibro sword comms jammer shenanigans. So. <laughs> yep. Also, I think um Congrats to the top four because I think other than Mike, I don't think any of them have ever been in top fours as far as I remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I think this is a totally new crowd. Yeah, which is awesome to see. Too, it is you know? awesome. Yeah, you know, I think actually top eight was a totally new crowd other than me and Mike. It could have been. I don't. You know, I wasn't even thinking I, of it I that think, way. I think Jason may have because I was looking back at a couple of the previous um, Invader seasons. I feel like I saw his name pretty deep in season one or two. Okay. Mm, okay. So. Um, Other than that, I think Snyder is his first yep. Invader League. In Osadom, I think it might be. I don't I remember seeing the name, at least. Especially last season when I ran it. I don't remember seeing it. And uh, Timbo, I think, is also somewhat newish to the scene. Um, Timbo's played think, ladder, but yeah, he, this might he be... He played um, ladder, and I think he yeah. might have played last year, last season, but I don't think he's played prior to season you know, season five. Yeah, like, it's nice to see some fresh, fresh faces. Yeah, that's no, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, Rebel Special Forces. So I know we're already like, what is 45 minutes into this cast or whatever. Yeah, remember so, when we said we were going to talk about this for 20 minutes? Yeah, I yeah, I know. <laughs> yep, you're right. I know. Um, so if you just fast forward to this spot because you didn't want to hear us ramble about our game, congratulations. Uh, this is the end of the show. No, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> I do think we should because uh, Rebel Special Forces is um, there are a lot of interesting things to talk about and they're all they're all reasonably viable. Um, it might be the most hard fought spot in the game right now. Yeah, so I think we should probably do this with like quick hits. Yeah, for each for each unit. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start with the easiest one: uh, commandos slash strike teams. Is are you, is there any reason to take the full commandos? I think that there's more reason than people give them credit for. Um, I mean, what, what what is it like? Seventy points. They're super cheap now. For yeah. for a full squad with sharpshooter and Pierce, I think I'd I'd have to look at it. Um, it's not it's not a unit that I add up on paper all that often. Um, they're yeah. So the naked the naked unit is fifty. And yeah. the the sniper is twenty eight, so seventy eight. Yeah, I mean it's an expensive core unit with sharpshooter and Pierce. I don't Special hate force. it. Yeah. Well, I, sorry, I, I was comparing it to a core unit, right? Oh like, yeah, you, sorry. You could, yeah. you could conceivably take six rebel core units and then like beef it up to like eight rebel core units. Yeah, with, yeah. With right. like um, sharpshooter and Pierce, is it is it the best thing you can be doing with this slot? Probably not. Um, yeah i mean the issue is that it's just squishy right like they're a squishy unit they're super um, melty yeah like y- you can get into the situation where like like let's say you take like a full commando and like two strikes or something like that you now are in a position where do i take this unit to range three or do I keep it at range five um and now i i do think that there might be merit to having them be like a back capper like an objective back capper too like they're like a not as squishy when they're like ranged out right but essentially it's a unit that probably wants to be at range three to maximize their value and they're just super squishy i wouldn't take yeah i wouldn't take rebel full rebel commandos personally i mean just because of that i i think it's just their role overlaps with pathfinders which i'm sure we'll talk about here um and i think pathfinders just kind of are more flexible and do it better if you're going to take that sort of unit yeah i I agree i honestly think their role overlaps more with like a captain dlt who costs that's probably true with situational awareness who costs one more point at 79 and they're not taking up a special forces slot they don't take up a special forces slot and they're way more durable yeah oh totally Um, so 
um, and arguably does as much damage and can also shoot at range. F- I mean, clearly the, the commando unit can shoot at range five, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I have a hard time just fine. It's just not a unique enough tool set for 78 points. Yeah. yeah I agree. <laughs> now, I do think there's possibly some merit if you're in a situation where like, you know, you're going to be facing a lot of droids and you want to take some cheap special forces slots anyways, I could see taking the naked unit at 50 points as just like a, you know, sort of like a naked rebel trooper, but with courage to and sharpshooter. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know. four black dice with sharpshooter is like not terrible. It's especially fine. Surge, especially surge hit too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's okay. It's like a mini fives unit that dies when it gets shot. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. All right. We, we're trying to avoid Gar Salt on this cast, which I mean, we did also, successfully for the entire first half. Yeah, like, clearly. Like... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I swear I'm okay. All right. Uh, so probably not taking the full unit, I think, is our takeaway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely not taking more than one. Yeah. Um, so Sniper Strike Team, 48 points. Still a good staple. Tried and true. I mean, like... I, I think for me here, like if you don't have a specific plan with your special forces slot, still just three snipers. You know? yep. um, I definitely think that again, if you don't have a plan, it's definitely at least two, but like, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. I mean, as someone that typically plays Luke, right. Or I'm um, building a list with Luke say, I typically just put three snipers in because it's easier to build around a list that is better for me, which is a loot gun line, right? There's like a land of loot gun line with like four DLTs and like three snipers or something like that. I think that I put together or maybe there's some Z6s rolled in there. But essentially, I can't really afford to put anything else in the special forces unless I'm going into like a, a straight up like Wookiee skew, which is which there is merit to, I think, too, um, which we'll get to when we get to Wookiees. But Personally, I would prefer heavy weapons on the, on my core units and snipers, so I'm always building out with three with rebels. I I think that like there's been like a discussion about how like civil war snipers aren't as good as arcs, which I listen when you're comparing like nothing's as good as arcs. Nothing as good as arcs. Like and I and I understand that there's there's no, more. I thought we weren't getting the gar salt out. No, I'm not even getting salt. It's not salt. That's just an objective it's, it's fact. Just a, right. It's just a fact. Like, <laughs> you should not be comparing them to arcs. And I do understand that there's a lot more weapons in this game that can kill your snipers quicker than there were in the past. But there's ways around that with cohesion and, you know, making sure you're always hiding that second guy and you can withstand some stuff before you get shot. I, I, I understand the lack of durability compared to like, like a year ago in the game, you know, you got Mando rockets, you got the AAT, you got arcs, you got BX droids. Like there's so many different things in, you got air support and now orbital strike. Yes. But there was always kind of coordinated bombardment. There was always maximum firepower. Like there's always, those things were always in the game. I think it's just been a little bit amplified with some things and people are kind of hedging their bets a little bit by taking other stuff. Well, snipers are still, snipers are still good. I also think, really getting you know, as long as we're making comparisons and stuff, um, there's no more more efficient tool in the game for dealing with Republic units. Long like, range it, pierce, it, like it's so you know, essential. Like, and high velocity. High velocity. Yeah, you know, like it, they don't get to share their dodge tokens and it pierces through their red saves. So do they die to arc strikes a lot of the time? Yeah, but you need to kind of zone them a little bit more if that's what's happening. Yeah, you, um, you try to get to their to your core and let the arc shoot at your core rather than your snipers or something like that. Yeah, you your snipers can't be your front line against no. <laughs> against arcs, right? They no. gotta be like range two down away from yeah like your front line so that in order for the arcs to shoot your snipers, your front line has to be able to shoot the arcs. Shoot the arcs. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. And frankly, against a Republic list, I would rather have either of the Civil War era sniper strikes than BX snipers. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. High velocity and the native peers is huge there. So yeah, um, yeah, don't don't discount these guys. They're still good, and I still start most rebel lists with two of them, I not think, three. Yeah, I just think recently, and by recently, I mean like the past, like I don't know, four or five months, because we're in, stuck in like a time loop, anyways, right? Is that like it turned into this whole situation where it's like when they got nerfed from infinite range to range five, 
and the points drops obviously helped out some other stuff too, right? So people are experimenting. I just think that there is like that same situation where like, oh, I don't need strike teams anymore. They're not as durable or they get wiped out by more things now and they're not as good. They're still really, really good. Like that's all I'm really getting at. Like I listen back when they went from infinite range to range five, I went through this. I tried all sorts of lists without snipers. And then I started playing snipers again. I was like, I needed these in my list. I don't know what I was doing. And I keep on circling back to that same thing when I'm list building with rebels. Yeah. I I do think that like, um, you do have to get good at hiding them. Like otherwise, you know, you'll you'll get me who just eats your sniper teams for breakfast at the start of the game every well, day. Well, and even now that we see more speeders between yeah. T-47s and Staps, you know, they're good at flanking. Like, you might think that that one guy is out of sight, but, yeah. you know, fast units are good at flanking strike teams. So I'll keep that in mind, too. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the first thing I do it, during Thanks, every Zach. game, like, the, at, like, during deployment, the first thing I do is, can I catch an exposed strike team that's mm-hmm. been misplaced you know that um people are going to do that against you you got to get good at hiding them yep um all right let's move on to pathfinders how are you running them if you're running them i stand i think um i still think pow is not worth the points um even with the extra health which is interesting because i used to love pow because the inspire back when he released and like death troopers and like suppression and like and 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 I think Kyle, I think you brought Pow Pathfinders to um you know back in like a whole year plus ago. Yeah, I brought him to High Command. I, yeah, it was good enough to get me a world invite. So. I regret um, co- convincing you into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I still think it's Bistan, um, probably Recon Intel that give you the flexibility. You're taking the free yeah. gun. Um, I think after that, it's all up to you. So that's um, that's 88 points. By the way, Bistan plus Recon Intel. That's not bad, really. I it's mean, fine. It's probably so. Like, if you're going to take Ion, it's probably one of the better ways to get it. Well, that's what I was going to get to is that it's like the one source of Ion that's actually quote unquote good in the game, right? Like, a lot of Ion guns really aren't worth it. Um, I don't think you're necessarily taking Bistan for the Ion. It's just more of like a bonus to the Bistan, right? Yeah, and I think the fact that there are so many droids floating around right now, like like nice. a, just a casual ion token is kind of nice. Yeah, yep. of course. Um, I still just have nightmares when I play Pathfinders. I just feel like they blank out on both sides for me personally. So I Yeah, have... they're so swingy. Yeah, it, it's, you know, again, we discuss this every podcast. Like we're discussing it in like terms of like a tournament format that you got to be consistent with. And like Pathfinders are either going to be like the best unit you have or like the worst unit you have. And there's really no in between. It feels like sometimes when you play them, I mean, there is, I'm not saying it is, doesn't exist, but it just feels that way. The inconsistency can really hurt you. Um, yeah. I, I think naked pathfinders might actually be a good unit to have too. I mean, they're down to what? 60. What are they, what are they base? They were they cut. They There's were cut down. 58. 58. So yeah, they they were down. To, yeah, they I could actually see naked pathfinders. Yeah, because you can infiltrate with them, which gives you a little bit more flexibility, right? With like what you're trying to do. Well, it's now, good for objectives. Be, like 58 yeah. point objective unit that you can just like toss down on the table is pretty nice. Yeah, like especially if you're like playing VAPs, like, and you can just plop them down on one of your VAPs and not have to like move a unit twice to get to a mm-hmm. Sometimes you have a position. Like uh, if you couldn't infiltrate Maul in your VAP in that game, right, Kyle, that we just, just discussed, you yep. would have had to actually had to move to that VAP quite a bit, right? Um, because you're yeah, playing that could have been a problem because he would have yeah. come over that hill first. Exactly. Uh, turn and take that clanker is my boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> so, Very aware. Um, now, obviously, Pathfinders are not Maul, but I'm just saying it gives you the flexibility to put yourself, like you could put your VAP in a really safe spot that you would have to move three turns to get to, but you can actually just plop your Pathfinders down and they've already earned their points back by letting your army do the rest of the stuff. Yep. Again, the issue is that they're taking a valuable spot in a special forces unit but I can see the case for a naked Pathfinder unit too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're taking Pathfinders, you're taking, I think you're taking them with Bistan. I think you have to put an uplink on that squad, frankly. I think I, I agree because you're getting value out of the recover. Um, and, and, and offensive and, push too. Well, and, and push, I also think yeah. you need Cassian, like you need the volunteer yeah. yes. mission I agree. Um, value, I think, in order to make it like worth it. 
Um, but being able to like drop them, shoot and scoot, um, and then being able to kind of like do it again, I think you know, I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. But but without the uplink, I I'm not a fan. Yeah, and actually, I think it was uh, Stabcast Ryan ran Piston Pathfinders with the uplink and the ion with Cassian for Invader Elims and made it pretty far. He actually had a game um, against, it was one of those like six B2 lists, like the 10 activation six B2s. And he's base, uh, his list was basically like Cassian, Operative Luke, Biston, and then a bunch of naked units. <laughs> so you look at that list and you're like, how is this going to chew through six B2s? Um, and the answer is with ion tokens and a lightsaber, <laughs> apparently. Uh, like it, you know, uh, ion tokens are still great against droids. So yeah, I just I inherently just don't like how ion interacts because it has to deal the wound. Now it's easier to do that against droids, but like if you're shooting a tank, yeah. let's say like an AAT. Oh yeah, it's not reliable tank, against. It tank. feels horrible because if that thing I saves mean, up, you're still not putting the ion token down. If, which is if it weird. was reliable against the tank. It'd be way too good. Yeah, that, well, good. It, it, yeah, yeah. I think we've discussed this several times. Like, it, it's on that thin line where it would be too good if you changed it. Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's one of those mechanics good. that I think will forever either just be not very good or entirely too good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah because of how strong just like full stop taking away actions is. Um, all right, that's Pathfinders. You guys got any other Pathfinder thoughts? I just, I don't know. They're in a weird spot because they, they don't have a non-unique heavy weapon. I, I wish yeah. they did so much. Like, They're basically not spammable. Like, no. no like, like, if you could take two or three Bistans, like, I think the conversation might change. Yeah, I agree. I, That's I, actually I agree. kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, but, like, the fact that you can't, like... Because, like, all of a sudden, like, your army has infiltrate as opposed to, like, one or two units. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like one of those units is POW, so it's like not very strong. Right. But I think like if you're infiltrating those guys and like Jin, like you you got like a pretty forward bubble that your opponent like has to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and that like one unit dice. on its one unit on its own is like restricted to like a flanking roll. Yep. They can get focus fired too. Like that's the other thing. Yeah. Like if you can saturate them, it's totally different. But if you're throwing one out there. They can get focused on. That's the issue. You know, it's like yep. fleets. It's like original like days with fleets. Yep. Yeah. I just want to like be able to give them a Z6. Right. Like if they, yeah. if, if they had something like that. <laughs> That'd be the balls. I think it'd, it'd be all right. Yeah. You know? Four, 14 white dice. <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Right. That'd be I mean, it's worth noting the naked squad Part, has yeah. eight at range yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Which is still good. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, all right. Let's do Mando's. Mando's are we a... talking about clan run or are we talking about both or... let's talk about both okay. let's talk about clan run first so clan run is the uh, unique version you got to take tristan and ursa and then it's one random other dude they each have two wounds um i mean they're only taking them with sabine on the i think it's sabine only yeah yeah i don't know i think with vigilance that might not be true yeah, because you can kind of duplicate the uh, the retinue effect. The retinue effect. Like, don't get me wrong, getting a free aim token every turn after you get your free dodge token is like nice, and it like definitely ups their their. But like if you're using them as like an objective unit, um, they're just like really expensive. Is my problem? Well, they and are. that's and that's why I think you almost have to run them with Sabine for that aim dodge interaction that you're discussing. Like I think it has to be Sabine with vigilance because you get that dodge token on them early and then you can start taking those aims because I've, I've played clan run a handful of games and I always felt like they were aim starved rather than dodge starved, but the dodge serves them better because of situational awareness. Right. But like you're in this weird position where you kind of want multiple aims whenever you can get the chance because of long shot and lethal to kind of get their money's worth with their dice pool, because like they're, they throw good dice when you get all of them involved, but you also need them to do reliable damage to like red save units, right? Which is kind of funny because they're like a red saving unit that can save out of their butt too, right? Mm -hmm. like you want to, you like the lethal is so, I've always, I've come to find that the lethal is so, so important, but you're, you never have that second aim. 
and turns it, out adding Pierce to attacks is good. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> and, and again, like if you're shooting white save units, you really don't care for the lethal. But like when you're shooting against clones, you and you're taking this hundred something point unit and you're shooting clones, right? You have to do damage, or it's gonna feel wasted, right? And, yeah. and I and I just don't think you actually want Clan Ren at range two until it's like late in the game and you're just kind of doing cleanup anyways, right? If you're shooting their gun, I mean. Um, you want them shooting at range four and three if you're taking rockets, which is another discussion, but you want them shooting at the three range as much as possible. Yep. And you kind of want them double aimed, but you really can't double aim unless you bring an O push, which I still think you're bringing situational awareness. I just think there's just a weird interaction between it all. Um, and that's why I still think it, it, it's Sabine only because you at least give yourself the option to have those options because of the free token exchange in nimble and vigilance. Yeah, I agree. Um, so upgrades, I think you're taking situational awareness on them and it's not close. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm clan Ren for sure. I kind I of always want uplink when I build them up, but I sometimes don't have the points and it feels yeah. like, it feels like you're inflating them. But I can see the case for it. Jetpack rockets. I, mean, I it's only three dice with them. I know, but I personally like them. I, but the issue is again, you run into the point situation because you're taking them with Sabine already. Um, the way I see jetpack and the way I see jetpack rockets for Mandos is kind of like Padme's gun, and it's a whole bit of a discussion. I always feel like it gives your opponent something to think about. And it's sort of important, like if they, and it's probably more important on regular Mandos than it is on Clan Run because Clan Run can shoot at range three, but at least they have to, like when you're bringing Mandos with rockets, they have to think about that extra range band. And again, it's more important probably in the generics, but it's eight points for, well, it's, it can be more than three dice if you're shooting at range three, right? You can shoot Tristan's Ursus and you throw the, you can throw the one in just for the blast, which is which is how I would probably try to do it myself. But again, your, your aim starved for that shot. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel great. It doesn't feel great. I don't know. I like to hedge my range bands. It just depends on how much points are in your list, I guess. Yeah. The rockets seem like a luxury to me on yeah. clan run. Yeah. Specifically. Um, you're definitely on it. Giving him grenades. Maybe you give him recon Intel. I guess I would on these guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's my most common, probably Tristan, Ursa, Situational, and Recon until it comes out to 114. Yeah, and then you just kind of go from there, essentially. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about the generic unit. The generic's weird because like three months ago, it would have been like, oh man, these guys are great. Um, I, I just think they they might be eclipsed by what these... <laughs> so, I was going to say the exact same thing. I actually I think that might be true like right this instant. Yeah. However, I think the AA5 makes Mando's like, hmm. Because of the uh, medic? I mean, the medic, you get like two or three free aim tokens. Yeah, the aim tokens are huge. Yeah. And you, yeah, you get, so you got, you got a, you got a battle boat that's just sitting there <laughs> handing your Mando's dodge tokens, aim tokens, and healing them. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, like, oh, those upgrades are so good. <laughs> and, like, don't get me wrong, those things are good for Wookiees, too. But when you're putting a Mando model back as opposed to a Wookiee wound, like, it, it's there's a big difference there. It is. Right. Like, yep. um, so yeah, I, I think the AA5 has the potential to make, you know, like triple Mandos, uh, even if you only have like one or two squad of Mandos, like just being able to heal them is like basically for free. I mean, I think it's an action, right? Um, but like, but it has no, it has no threshold. There's no capacity, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, the AA five is gonna probably die like early-ish in a game unless you're in know. a good position. Uh, no, it could still live. I'm not saying it can't. But the AA five that... is gonna have like the same situation as R two. Where it's like this thing isn't actively killing me right now. Do I really want to waste time shooting it? Yeah. Um, and the answer might very well be yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. well, but a lot of people are not going to make that decision. So like you have to really dedicate killing an AA fives, yeah. right? R two because like it's keyworded behind armor. Like even like 
clones like still have to spend like two turns shooting it you yeah, know for like, sure for sure um it's 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 like almost as hard to kill as an aat from that perspective um it, it is a red save unit right no it's white it's white all right i lied a little bit uh <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it's about as durable as an airspeeder yeah a little more durable slightly more durable the good thing um, is that if you're building it out to be like a support thing rather than like a transport or like a hard hitting unit, you can kind of just stay. You could kind of just do like loops in your like backcourt, right? You it know? doesn't. It doesn't have a speeder. You don't have to do yeah. anything. You just. Oh yeah, I'm thinking, that, I'm thinking that's the movie. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. even have a speeder. Not yeah. only that, but like because it doesn't shoot, like you're not like aggressively moving it up to engage your right. opponent. Yeah, right. That's what I mean. Like they got to go just, out of their way to go after it. You yeah. just moving you know. along with the army wherever you want, really. Not only that, but like you can like you know pull up like and do like kind of like one of those like slide and sideways things, and then put your mandos right behind it. I got to imagine it completely blocks line of sight. <laughs> yeah, we haven't yeah. seen the we've seen some like shots of the physical model from the stream and and stuff, and it it looks rather large. It look it looks uh, yeah. yeah it looks like kind of like mobile small building large. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know like. <laughs> I mean, may, maybe you can see under it or something. I, I don't That's know. It's possible. Um, yeah. It does. It does have hover, so I don't know how far it is off the base. Here, here, here's an, here's an yeah. interesting modeling for advantage discussion that we'll table for another day. Oh no! Are you obligated to use the peg that comes in <laughs> A five, or can you glue it directly on the base? Does it come with a peg? Yeah. I assume so. It's a repulsor yeah. vehicle. I think. Anyway, was, I, I don't I want to talk about that yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, can you glue a staff I don't know if I base? want to talk about that ever. I don't. I don't. But... <laughs> <laughs> can you shave the peg? Can I you feel like we've had peg? this discussion like a year yeah, ago. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I right. think we have. Back anyway, this stack. Up um, so. I'm not. We're not advocating for any of these things, by the way. I just think it's amusing. Um, <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, we're talking about Mandos. So yes, I. I think. I think the summary. I agree with you right now. Um, Wookiees are kind of just better at a similar role. Um, yeah. I think it's possible that changes with the party bus. It's about points. It's um, about points essentially, right? Like, yeah, like you can have a bad save with a Mando un unit and just get wiped. Yep. Like Wookiees, you can have like a bad save and like lose like two Wookiees and they're still doing. W something. Wookiees have almost the same effective wounds as. Yeah. And and, they actually um, have more effective wounds than a than a generic. So, a generic. Mandalorian squad with the Beskad Duelist offensive push, recon intel, and the rockets is 114. Um, and that's four models with red saves, which is 12 effective wounds, basically, yeah. which is a lot. It is. But Wookiees have, you know, they have white saves, but they have so many, they have 12 raw wounds at a Wookiee unit. So you have, yeah. it's like 14 and 0.4 effective wounds when you account for their save. But it's also like not remotely susceptible to bad luck on the Wookiee's part. Like you yeah. just, it's twelve wounds. You just you gotta chew through them. And like when you um, lose a Wookiee, their dice pool still feels really good. When you lose a yeah. Mando, their dice pool feels like oh yeah, it, hurt, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah. As a clone player, I would rather set up across from Wookiees. Oh sure, because well, you, sure. yeah, you throw yeah. so many freaking dice that I, yeah, you're just like yeah. oh, I gutted three of your Wookiees out of your squad. Of yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I think just, in yeah. in general, the Wookiees are less vulnerable to bad luck. Totally. Yeah, and and um, like, and, and they're they also better in melee. Better melee, they have better dice at range to deal with like droids. Right, they have about clearly like jump two is slightly more mobile in scale. Yeah, and speed three clearly is faster than speed two, so they're a little bit more mobile. Mandos are yeah. definitely better at objectives. Yeah. Sure, for sure. Um, but if you're just trying to like get in there with a beefy special forces unit and kill stuff, Wookiees are better for that. Yeah. I um, also think Wookiees benefit from being taken in multiples way more than any other unit on this list. For sure. Just, yeah. just cause like a lot of times you can kill the first Wookiee squad. It's the other two that get you. Right. It's, you know? it's also important to note like with the Mandos, if you're, you know, the generic unit, you're not bringing Pierce at range where Wookiees are bringing Pierce at range. Yeah. Right. You know, like that's yeah. really yeah. important because you're, you're essentially taking a spot from a unit that would have Pierce. Like you'd be taking it from a sniper per se. Right. Or clan Ren, right. You're, those units have Pierce lethal being in the other one. Whereas, yeah, I mean, you know, clearly you can just put Tristan in a generic squad too. That too. Um, but you know, what, 
but that's another situation at hand, yep. I guess. Anyway, let's talk about Wookiees since we are already talking about Wookiees. Um, as our last Rebel Special Forces choice, good now. Excellent. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. bow, bow caster offensive push, and then the rest is kind of like what you want to go. Tenacity. With. Tenacity. I think I think O push, tenacity, recon, and tell are all stapled to these guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, Bowcaster too, Mike. Or are you or are you thinking naked Wookies are fine? I mean, I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, because you're still getting Pierce and melee with them, I, right? I yeah. I mean, with the changes to with the addition, I should say, do list to their unit card. Um, I mean the offensive push like makes a naked Wookiee squad, like, like the real deal in melee. Oh yeah. Um, clearly it's, it's a, it's a lightsaber. It j- j- a naked squad with offensive pushes is, is like Luke's lightsaber minus Pierce one. Yeah. Cause it still has Pierce one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah. Know, like it's just, it's almost as good as Luke's lightsaber and you yeah. have name token. Right? right. So like, I do agree. Um, that Mike, that you probably want, if you're taking Wookiees, you probably want a two of. I think there might be an edge case to bring a one of in like a Luke list. Uh, and then, you know, from there, I think a skew of like two or three is super viable. Um, I think the triple Wookiee lists are super interesting. Yeah, I do too. There is that one list, uh, although I, don't, I think the Wookiees didn't have the bowcaster, which I kind of wish it did, but there was like a, I think like a Cassian, like chewy triple Wookie. No, they had Bowcaster. That was Cowboy Tyrone's list. Oh, they had they had yeah. they had well, yes, yeah, so yeah, that's like that's super interesting. To it's me. ridiculous beef. Yeah, he yeah. um I mean that list is like it's got one mode, at least the way he he run ran it. Well, yeah. Which is you know, forward, like just hit the W key and push <laughs> yeah. put your finger on the W key and that's it. For sure. Um, but he was like ru- literally running his opponents over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm just doing quick list building right now you can fit five rebel troopers with dlts three wookies with opush and tenacity no heavies for 561 points that's um, pretty good it seems yeah. pretty good it does yeah that's a lot of a lot of raw bodies to is that with, without bowcaster that is yeah, without bowcasters bow that clearly that gets like uh, 100 points more expensive if you start throw a bowcaster on each one of yeah spots, no, you're filling right? that out with yeah, probably like two characters or something 660 when you throw the bowcasters in there which is which which still leaves you like 140 points for characters and stuff it, it totally does i just like you can you can take like a commander luke in this this list yeah right yeah, and, like, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because why not right yeah because... yeah actually you could do you could do a generic officer and commander luke bring vigilance and like it all wonky with it yeah i mean like which although that list might benefit from strict uh, yeah. but I mean, you're not giving orders to your rebel troopers yeah yeah you know, i don't I, know yeah well, I'm plus courage too I, I just like yeah i mean like rebel officer commander luke uh you can take you can take all the force pushy goodness and your 10 activations your 10 activations you know and in all frankly like the in a pinch the wookies can still shoot at range too like there's still yeah. six black dice um and and you can use offensive push if you need to you know and i mean like yeah i don't know a triple wookie five rebel troopers rebel officer with luke and everything's got upgrades minus the bowcaster is a 788 12 point bid Seems good. Yeah. Or here, here's one for you. Three Wookiees with the bowcaster, offensive push, tenacity, and recon intel. Four rebel trooper captains with situational awareness and DLTs. Um, two rebel officers with vigilance and R2-D2. 791. 10 activations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it lacks a powerhouse uh, hero. but Okay. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't know if you... I mean... That's kind of anyway, a terrible thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's just the point is like there are some really interesting combinations. You yeah. Can yeah, yeah totally. Um so yeah, I think that's basically the mode for Wookiees, right? As far as upgrades and stuff are concerned. Yeah. Bowcaster, yeah. maybe not bowcaster, but then plus offensive push tenacity and recon intel. Yeah. I, I might buy a third Wookiee squad, frankly. <laughs> if, if I ever decide I want to play Rebels. The my main issue is that I've only got one DLT and I'm not sure I want to buy anymore. That's my issue. <laughs> like if I play competitive rebels and I want DLTs, it's If you need some, let me know. I got 
I got five. <laughs> yeah, yeah I just, you're like, like the only person I know that has five. The thing that's about it I planned is, on playing them for 2020 Worlds, and then yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you and I were like, both discussing. You know, I was gonna borrow yeah. DLTs. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I don't know Atlantic City. Or are you you're gonna play Droids? I am because I have not. Um... Yeah, let's talk about that real quick because I'm excited about it. Yeah, I uh, I have not actually had a chance to put my fully painted droids on a real table yet so um i'm probably going to play them for atlantic city uh which is in june and hopefully it will happen <laughs> um I, mean, I think i think it's gonna i think so too um you know i'm uh i'm fully fully vaccinated so um lucky duck yeah um you know it's still two months away but yeah yeah and you have the, you have the same thing that i like I'm, I'm playing this this uh upcoming sunday uh with three buddies that were and all four of us are gonna be vaccinated and we're gonna be in a contained situation so yeah. we feel good about that right yeah um, we're actually gonna play at my place of work because i have like a huge like warehouse that we can play in set up two tables i have plenty of terrain um That's awesome. there's a gar- garage door so we can have air flowing in even you know we and, you know yeah like jealous. it's just a super safe situation very jealous right? yeah um but i'm literally concerned that i'm going to have feet for hands oh yeah and, I, i'm that's the other reason I'm going to play droids. I will probably yeah. just literally photocopy my Invader League list because <laughs> like, I don't want to have to worry about like strategy or how my list works or, you know, like what my units do because I'm going to be using actual range rulers and stuff. And like, I'm not going to know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been like a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to pick up like real plastic dice and roll them. And yeah, to the shock of no one, since I haven't played in like months, I'm playing. Use my like, hands it's, to move it's my re- droids across the for table. For the same reason. It's really weird to think that I hang out with you guys like once or twice a week, but I haven't actually seen you guys like in person for yeah. like, for a year. At this point. I've never even met Kyle. <laughs> like, I've never met Kyle. You weren't true? LV. Yeah, I joined. 50- I I'd never met you before. Hey, you didn't, you didn't go, go to, to LVO LVO. last year. Yeah, did not. Yeah, and I've never actually met you. Mm, this yeah. is a travesty that I have not yeah. realized until this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Mike and I had shared shared some moments in LVO, but uh. Well, you got to come to Atlantic City. It's I'm going down. to Disney World the week before, so. <laughs> so it sounds like you should have plenty of like husband cred built up. For that. I I am not ruling it out actually. Okay. It's more about the money, like more about me having the conscious. Tell, tell your wife that money. your friends want to see you, <laughs> and um. But yeah. yeah, I'm leaving it open. Let's put it that way. Because I have the flexibility of actually going. I, I prefer Big Spoon if you want to split a hotel room. <laughs> you know? um, anyway, uh, yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting that this is all happening. Yeah. Um, please don't like go if you're not, you know, we're not encouraging anyone to go or anything. I'm just saying for myself personally, I'm comfortable with my own safety situation based on being vaxxed. And- yeah. I'm no going. Doubt. So, no doubt. um, but yeah, anyway, um, that was rebel. Do we have anything else to say on Wikis? Uh, I mean, I think outside of snipers, these are the best things that you can be doing with the slot right now. I think so too. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, yeah. I, and triple, triple Wookies are making their mark in tournament play right now. I, I you know, the only list I've fought against that has been running it was Bushman's list. It was kind of scary, you know. Um, See, you mentioned Mando's in an AA five or behind an AA five. I think Wookiees in an in an AA five is like going to be I, interesting to see. I just like I don't think they benefit that much from it. Like they've already got the aim tokens from offensive push. That they, they the wound regen on them is like. I mean, sometimes it matters, but probably it doesn't matter a ton. It doesn't matter as much as it does with like a Mando unit. Right. You know, like you're healing two wounds on this Wookiee, like you might not even put a model back, right? Um, and <clears throat> the, uh, like the Dodge token is also kind of marginal. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. It's still good, but I sort of feel like all of those things are way better on a Mando squad. Yeah. Whether Mandos are sure. good enough to justify taking it, I think is another question yeah yeah for sure yep all right well uh hopefully folks can catch your game on saturday good luck mike thanks i uh the the 13 activation stat menace we'll we'll see see if i can um back up all the 
<laughs> that I've been throwing down for the last <laughs> three months. Um, I think my wife works, yeah. so I'll be watching. I, I think on the bright side, I'm not sure he could roll better than he rolled last game. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like well, shotting phase two. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. full to dead phase two squad. Well, and he was like, he was rolling like three out of four blocks on his stabs. And yeah, 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 yeah. Was, they were, they were, uh, it, yeah, yeah. It was, I didn't see the game, so I can't comment. Oh, uh, there was a lot of white block saves. <laughs> there, like, like it was like, you know, when you. You play tauntauns and you know you finally get like a good shot on them and then they save like four yeah. out of six. It yeah, was, it was yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like frustrating to even watch. Yeah. <laughs> like when you see that yeah. sometimes. Sometimes white saves just do that. You expect them to fail and then they don't, and then you're like, oh yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Kyle, you're dice in the early start of that game. You're like four for your first six or something. Just just on the air support. I think I yeah. failed like every save for the rest of that game. Yeah, you did no, it was the air support shot. You like saved like four or six. Or you something. know. In hindsight, I think that air support was wrong. Um, I agree. I mean, I, I knew you were going to do it, which is why I played Roger Roger. But I mean, in fairness, it did like bring the first, I think both of the squads I killed were the, the ones, ones you hit. They were hit with air support. Yeah, they were both mm-hmm. slightly reduced size. I think the one, the one you, the one you one shot was six models, I think, when you did it. There was, there was five. Five. Left five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got I, like nine hits, so it hardly mattered. But <laughs> yeah, and then you rolled off blanks and three surges. So yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the thing is, it's like, it's the difference between like when a B1 unit is at full health and you roll out with Z6, there's still a chance you don't one shot them. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, right. but like when there's only five models as opposed to seven, you're like, all right, if I get nine hits into the squad, like they're dead. Yeah, I yep. think the air support was a fine play. I'd for to, to I, just, I just chip, like to I think, chip them a little bit. Yeah, could I, have I, used it as cleanup later, maybe, but I don't know. I think it was maybe a little premature, but yeah. yeah. Well, I do think based on, I mean, we talked about this earlier, but I kind of think you had to play standing orders potentially like anywhere between turns two through four. The, yeah. So there might not have been a better time to play two pip. Yeah, honestly. totally fair. Totally fair. Yeah, I could have also attempted to do the thing I did on turn two on turn one. With standing orders. Yeah. Which yeah, I think probably was a safer play. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, there's more time to recover if it goes badly. That's true. Yeah. And I'm less likely to play standing orders on that turn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been the post game show part three um, <laughs> <laughs> for Notorious Scoundrel Civil War. I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. I'm Zach. And uh, we'll see you next week.